Hey everybody, Mel here, 400 AGL. Today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. Got stuff set up out in the front yard, and I've got a collaboration video going with Brian for my adventures. Brian, how you doing? I'm doing good, Mel. How are you? Oh man, it's a beautiful sunny day over here in West Arkansas. What do you got over there in East Tennessee? Well, I'm in the Smoky Mountains of Eastern Tennessee. I'm in uh, the Gallenberg Pigeon Forge Sevierville area, and it is about three o'clock here today. The sun is beaming. There's not a cloud in the sky, and beautiful clear skies. We are close to a uh, helicopter's tourist place. It's two miles away, but we're only going to fly about a thousand feet out and back for this return to home altitude test that we're doing today on the Mavic 2 Air. I'm going to be doing that same test with the Mavic 2 Pro. I saw a video the other day where there were some possible issues about the return to home altitude settings. So we're going to do a couple little tests with a couple different drones and see what kind of results we get. Yeah, I want to see what we get with the, uh, the Mavic Air 2. Um, where I'm at is a little bit higher than most of the surrounding area and the terrain. So I'm going to take off from this beautiful area. As you can see, the Smoky Mountains are out here behind me. And I'm going to take out and fly about 1,000 feet out. I've got my return to home altitude set at 200 feet. I'm going to be flying up about 300 feet. I want to see if from the ground level that I'm at now where the drone takes off and I go up to 300 feet, if the drone comes down to 200 feet to return to home or it simply returns to home at 300 feet. And then also I'm gonna change the return to home altitude to 300 feet. I'm gonna fly the drone out to 100, 150 feet and I'm gonna see how long it takes to go up to the 300 feet and come back and so on. So we're gonna do both. We all know that the drone will climb to 300 feet no matter what your elevation is to return to home. So just we're gonna do the screen record and we're gonna do the video here. That way you get both spectrums to where you can see that we wasn't cheating and we done everything on the up and up and the drone worked properly at climbing to 300 feet to return to home and we're gonna see if it descends to 200 feet to return to home. Mel, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Where I'm at, I have a 200 foot ceiling. So my return to home altitude is set at 98.4 feet, basically 30 meters, um, basically 100 feet. So on my first run, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, take the drone out probably five, 600 feet away, and I'll be at about 60 feet or so, and I'm gonna hit return to home and the drone should climb to the basically 100 feet, roughly 98 feet, and return to home. And then I'm gonna do another test where I fly out the same range, five, 600 feet, and I'm gonna do that at 150 feet. That way I stay well below my 200 foot ceiling and hit return to home and see what the drone does. The, the video I saw the other day, um, the guy that was flying it when he hit return to home his return to home altitude was lower than what his drone was, so the drone did not descend to that return to home altitude. It simply flew back at the set altitude that he was at. So that, what's that? That's on a Mavic Mini too, correct? That was on a Mavic Mini, yeah, exactly. So that, that showed what the Mavic Mini does. We're gonna find out what the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Air do, and then we can pretty much assume that probably all of DJI drones, if you are higher than your return to home altitude is set, the drone will not descend to that altitude and then return home. It will return home at whatever altitude you're at. That's the, that's the result we expect to see. But let's go flying. Brian, you want to go first? So I'm going to go ahead and do my first test at a return to home at 200 feet and I'm gonna fly up to 300 feet from where I take off at. So let's go ahead and, and see how this works. Now my screen recorder is running and I'm gonna give her a shot.
so my current altitude is or i'm a i'm 1103 feet away i'm gonna fly up to 300 feet Turn to home altitude is set at 200 feet, and I'm currently at 309 feet altitude at 1,102 feet away. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the ever so famous return to home button, something that I very rarely do, guys. I usually fly my drone home, and if I lose signal, I usually still try to fly it home. If I lose sight of my drone or um, if I'm in a situation where the drone's lower than, than where I can actually see on a horizon, if I'm inspecting or if I'm doing a cinematic flight and I have to hit the return to home button, um, I will, but I've only hit it a few times since I've been flying drones. Uh, most of the time the drone will actually, if you lose signal, it'll say returning to home automatically. And then once I get my video back, I'll take back over my drone and actually fly it the rest of the way home once I get my video signal back. Very, very rarely have I let it go all the way to return to home and use precision landing and all that. So this is the third time that I can recall hitting this button and third time's a charm. So let's go ahead and hit it and see what happens. So, According to my telemetry, my drone is flying at 308 feet and it is coming home. So it's not descending. It's uh, staying around 308, 309 feet and it's already back to 682 feet away from me. So the drone is coming back at the same altitude that I was currently hovering at and did not descend down to 200 feet to come back. Now the drone is 200 and... 150, 100, 96. I'm gonna go ahead and point the camera down so that way you guys don't have to look at a blown out sun horizon. So the drone is now coming down to 275 feet, 260 feet, 250, 248. And we're going to see where this thing lands. Now, I didn't mark where the drone took off from, but I know about where it took off from. Currently, it looks like it's going to land on my head, but we're going to see. It was just a few feet away from where I'm standing at filming this. Okay, I'm back down on the ground at uh, zero elevation. Um, I'm at one foot away from on my controller. As far as the drone landing where it took off from, it's about 27 to 30 inches away from where I took off at. So there you have it, guys. The drone came back at 309 feet, which is what I was flying at and hovering at, at 1,000 feet away. It did not descend to 200 feet, return to home. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Okay. And I'm taking my drone. I'm flying with it. And I am now. Just did a hundred and eighty degree turn. 
thing, and it is staying at a hundred percent important. So I've got the same result, Brian. It's it's returning back, and I've got to cancel the auto land because I don't want it to land up on the street. I'm going to point my camera down as well and bring it in manually. Okay, everybody. So here's the the final the final grand finale. It doesn't matter if you have the Mini Two. The Air 2, the 2 Pro, or the Zoom for that matter. I don't have a Zoom here, but so it doesn't matter if you have any of those, or the Mavic Mini itself, or the uh, um, Mavic Air 2. No, I said that already. Um, Mavic Air 1. Um, doesn't matter which one of those drones you have any of them and i'm presuming the phantoms and the inspires uh all of them all i can do is guess at those because i i can't fly them can't fly them all it would take a week it would just take too long so the the first air um it does it doesn't matter which drone you have set that down over there it doesn't matter which drone you have when you hit return to home, regardless of your return to home altitude setting in your app, if the drone is already above that setting, it will not descend to your predetermined return to home altitude. It'll come back home at whatever altitude it happens to be at. Can be a good thing. It just gives you a little extra clearance above everything, or it can be a bad thing. If you have your return to home altitude set so that you'll fit under something as you're coming back, then your drone might crash into it. So all these tests that Brian and I did with the drones, it just goes to show, pay really, really close attention to what you have your settings locked in at in your app. Um, it, it could make a difference. It probably won't be a problem. There may be a lot of people that knew that the drone would not descend to your predetermined altitude, or there may be some that didn't know that it wouldn't. I didn't know that it wouldn't. I hadn't never had that happen. I don't use return to home. Probably the biggest reason I didn't know. So I think I've used return to home twice in my entire life. And that was once I had control of the drone again, I started flying it and went back into flying what I was doing. Didn't even bring it home. But uh, just be careful. Pay close attention to your app settings. Be really familiar with your app settings. And if you're flying a new drone, if, if, if you're a new flyer, pay very, very close attention. Learn all the settings before you fly. That's very important. It may mean the difference of you getting your drone back or not. So like I always say, hashtag fly safe, fly smart, fly legal. It, it's real easy to do. And even though you might have the mini and it's under 250 grams, it does not need to be registered, but it does need to be flown legally. You still got to fly by all the rules. So enjoy. I hope this video helps someone. I sure had a lot of fun making it. I want to say a special thanks to Brian, iAdventures. Uh, we've never did a, um, we never did a, uh, long distance video like this before. I mean, we were 700 miles apart, roughly, uh, using our phones to communicate. So we'd match all the audio up and everything. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and we've talked about that. We're going to do some, we're going to do some more of that kind of stuff. So if you like the content on my channel or Brian's channel, I invite you to subscribe. 
Ring the bell so you know when we put up another video. Like and share the videos. You can do that all for free. Just takes a couple minutes with a couple clicks, and that helps my channel out tremendously. And by the way, speaking of the original Mavic Mini, not the two, the Mini, when I hit 2,000 subscribers, this thing gets shipped to the winner, whoever it happens to be. And that's worldwide. So be sure to watch out for that. Tell your friends. Boost my subscriber count here, guys. Gals, everybody that flies or doesn't fly or has an interest, click that little red button. Don't cost you nothing. It's free. Thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video.